Why is After Effects playback so slow? I just need to edit, but I can't. That's right, you can't. But there are some tricks you can do. I'll get to those in a moment, but first I need to explain how After Effects works, which once you hear will help you understand the issue, and you'll be able to come up with your own ways to solve it when it happens. After Effects is not a non-linear video editor. It's not a linear video editor either. In really basic terms, even more basic than Kyrgyzstat, video editors play back video using the original files, but using the in and out points set in the timeline. Premiere Pro keeps to time, even if that means skipping a frame. Which makes sense, you're watching your edit back along with the sound. But long time viewers will know that I explain that After Effects is not Premiere plus effects, it is Photoshop plus time. After Effects works by rendering a preview quality version of each frame, and storing that render in your computer's RAM. When each frame is processed, it turns green in the timeline. So you can see which frames are good to go by the green line that emerges. Sometimes you'll see a blue line. That's where After Effects is going to cheat the RAM limitations by storing preview files not in the RAM, but in the media cache, effectively giving you longer previews. Adobe have gotten really good at getting AE to render preview frames quickly, so good that quite often it appears to be real time which is pretty neat if you think about it. But that doesn't help you, you need to check your animations and make sure everything is running correctly. So first off, go to Window, Preview. The Preview panel should open if it's not already. Let me undock mine so I can take you through it. In the dropdown we've got a bunch of shortcut keys which allow you to configure the different types of playback. I use three of these. The Spacebar, the Number Pad Zero key, and number pad period, if memory serves, AE updated the options a little while back, but I still have them configured to work in the following ways. Number pad zero is my muted playback version. When I hit that, you can see AE building each frame in turn, and the playback speed is abysmal. The handy, not real time message isn't really needed. But you can see the green line appearing. Now, at any time, I can hit zero again, and AE will start playing back from the cached frames this time in real time, but when it gets to the end of the green line, it loops back. These controls in the panel take care of that. I could use the cache before preview checkbox, but that just means I have to wait to see what it's going to do. And if I hit zero again, this time AE plays back the green line, but at the end starts building up each frame again. Number pad period is set to play back just the audio, which might be helpful on its own. But if you use the number pad asterisk or star key, you can leave markers, which gives you a visual tag for audio cues. The spacebar is my complete preview, video and audio, and it's habit rather than anything else, but I find I preview with number pad zero first, and then use the spacebar preview. It's worth checking out all the settings in the preview panel, but the one I suggest you pay close attention to is the play from dropdown. I always like this to be from current time, rather than from the start of the comp. Now everything I've said is all very well, but that still doesn't let you edit easily. And I know as I say the word edit, a thousand voices cry out, After Effects is not an editor, you should edit in Premiere Pro, and then only apply your FX in After Effects. <gasps> and they're right in that way, people saying things like a tomato is actually a fruit are right, but you wouldn't want them at parties or answering your questions on a forum. But Thanks to those improvements I mentioned earlier, you can get away with editing. This is one of my tutorial projects in After Effects. I've got backgrounds, floating animated graphics, an irritating cartoon in the corner, none of which I need to worry about when making edits to the screen recording. So I'll use the solo layer, which hides all the layers except for any soloed. This reduces the amount of processing AE has to do, and means it can keep up with real-time playback for most of the time. Audio works in the same way, but separately. So if I only want to hear my audio recording, I can just solo the audio recording. I do have to occasionally unsolo layers and cache playback, but for timing edits, solo gets me most of the way there. Sometimes though, the effects I'm applying are just too render heavy for this to work. For those occasions, I can force a lower resolution using this control. Normally I leave this on auto anyway, which lets AE take care of things for me, but I often see forum screenshots where this is set to full, meaning After Effects is processing a larger preview image. I've got a couple more tips for you, but under Article 654 of the YouTube Wannabe Guidelines, 
I must now ask for a like, subscription, bell click, and you know, generally demean myself for validation. At least I'm not banging on about Squarespace. I bet there's an ad here too. A couple of options in the preview panel can also help. You can reduce the frame rate of the previews, and you can also tell After Effects to skip frames. Both can help with getting the timing right. And speaking of panels, think about closing the library panel. This panel seems to create an active connection to the internet, which can help with accessing stock footage, but it's another competitor for your RAM. Another trick is that you can also look at turning off motion blur for the comp. When you render, this will be back on by default for any layers you've selected motion blur for. Yet another trick is using proxies to speed up previews. Taking a big video file and converting it to a proxy file can help too. For 3D effects like VC Element or Helium, you can generate a position null. During animation, you typically animate the position, scale and rotation of these nulls. So when trying to get the position timing down, why not temporarily turn off the solid with the 3D effect on, and then either add a new solid with a mask or a screenshot of the model. Make this layer 3D and parent it to the null object, zeroing out the position and rotation data. You can use this layer as a 3D proxy, which A you should be able to handle in real time. I know C4D's Cineware effect has a draft view, but I find that a little hard to see what's happening, so I'd probably use the 3D solution for this too. Finally, sometimes all I've mentioned still won't get you there, in which case it's time to be strategic and look at what effects and what layers you need for the edit. You may need to render out some elements and bring those back in as videos. Hopefully you found all that useful, and if nothing else, it's proof you can edit in 